The Guardian's facing some backlash after Nathan Robinson, the founder of a left wing magazine known as Current Affairs, was fired as a columnist from the publication. Now, why was he fired? Robinson claims that it has to do with a sarcastic tweet he put out following the US government's decision to send another $500 million in military aid to Israel. He wasn't very happy about that, and so he put out a bit of a sarcastic tweet. Now, Robinson says he lost his job after tweeting what he thought was a joke, what he said was a joke about the US military aid to Israel in December of 2020, shortly after Congress approved a COVID relief bill and separately $500 million in military aid to Israel, pursuant to a 2016 agreement between the United States and Israel. So under the Obama administration, tens of billions of dollars were allocated for military aid for Israel, and so that $500 million was part of that deal, and so it was included in an appropriations bill. Now, with that said, Nathan Robinson argued, I am, to my constant shame, moderately active on Twitter, so I relieved my anger with a joke tweet. And here's the joke tweet that he's referring to. Did you know that the US Congress is not actually permitted to authorize any new spending unless a portion of it is directed toward buying weapons for Israel? It's the law, and then he immediately followed it with, or if not actually the written law, then so ingrained in political custom as to functionally and indistinguishable, be indistinguishable from law, okay? So he was, Apparently punished for that. Um, he writes in Current Affairs, uh, of course, tweet one was sarcasm, which is common on Twitter. But to absolutely make sure that nobody thought this was some kind of actual law, I appended a second tweet to make it crystal clear that I was joking. This was 100% a joke. Let there be no room for misinterpretation about this joke, emphasis in original. Okay, now the editor in chief of The Guardian, John Mulholland, was not happy about this and sent a email to Nathan Robinson expressing how he was not pleased. I'm gonna read you a few excerpts from that email right now. As you partly present yourself as a guardian columnist, allow me to express my concern when you make an assertion as this, no such law exists. In which case this is, as one might say, fake news, irrespective of the later tweet when you say that it is indistinguishable from law, it is not law, end of. This email is honestly unbearable, I'm not gonna lie. Given the reckless talk over the last year and beyond of how mythical Jewish groups slash alliances yield power over all forms of US public life, I am not clear how this is helpful to public discourse. And I am not sure why signaling out or singling out financial aid to Israel in a tweet and devoid of any context and without mention of aid to other countries, either currently or historically, is a use useful addition to the public discourse. You are free, of course, to use Twitter in whatever way you choose. But it dismays me that someone who presents themselves as a guardian columnist would make such a clearly erroneous statement without, as I note, any context slash justification. Does John McCollin not know what Twitter is? Like that's all Twitter is. Twitter is 100% what he's complaining about. Um, it's where people share their pithy thoughts. It's where people are sarcastic. It's where people are vicious to one another. Twitter is awful. It's a dumpster fire. Um, but to use this as a reason to like go after Nathan Robinson and then start rejecting his columns, I think is a problem. And by the way, Robinson deleted the tweets. He apologized. Uh, and in uh, the post on current affairs, Robinson also writes that Maholland uh, had indicated the paper would not work with me in the future either, meaning that I should not even bother to send occasional freelance pitches. It was made very, very clear to me, your tweet about Israel annoyed the editor in chief. Now you are fired, do not come back. Maholland's assurance that Guardian writers are free to speak their minds was clearly false. You're free, but if you go after Israel, your pitches go in the wastebasket.
So the Guardian responded to um, you know Mediate about this. They asked for a statement, and they're claiming like, mm, no, we didn't we didn't fire him. I mean, it's just like a freelance columnist. Um, as we enter a new political era, we believe it's important to publish diverse and original voices in our opinion pages. We continually review the range of regular columnists we publish, and uh, we would welcome further contributions from him, meaning Nathan Robinson, in the future. Lie. Um, so. Yeah, so Jenk, I agree with you on that. Take it away. So look, The Guardian is normally a great publication. And there is one tiny bit of the defense that is true. Other than that, everything they've done here is trash. So number one, was it a joke? Of course it was a joke, everybody knows it was a joke. And he appended a tweet, that's like going to the next paragraph. So so you can't say like, oh. In the next paragraph, you wrote that it was a joke, but that doesn't count. So I will, I'm now treating it as a non joke. No, no, that's no, you're being purposely stupid. And it's because you want to punish him. It's not like you're that dense and you don't understand the context of how he said it. No, you want to send a message. You're not allowed to do this criticism. So now look, context matters. If this was a guy who had said things about Jews, then that's a totally different conversation. Then you go, wait a minute, it fits into the jigsaw puzzle in a completely different way when you see that. If he had ever started a sentence with the Jews control, that's it, you're done. Okay, I don't want any more columns that I would ban you, right? So it the context matters. This guy's never done any of that. All he did was question our American policy towards Israel. So then I gotta ask the McCollins of the world, how? Because you tell us we're never allowed to criticize. US foreign policy in regards to Israel. Otherwise, you just you claim even the jokes are anti-Semitic. So how tell us how to do it. Because you're foreclosing every opportunity. You can't do a boycott. You can't obviously you can't do violence. That's obviously true. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't criticize them, you can't do a joke, you can't do that. You can't so how? Tell us the one sanctioned way that we can say, hey, can we stop wasting money on a country that already has a ton of money? And that doesn't need our defense and oftentimes uses the defense to go on the offense and commit war crimes. So tell me how I can say it so I can say it, okay? So don't give me this crap and hide behind anti-Semitism on an issue directly related to Israel and clearly a joke. So it's so did they fire him? No, this is the one thing where they're technically correct. No, they did not fire him because he was not employed there. But did they ban him from the original emails? Definitely. Don't pretend you didn't, it's in the emails. So now you tell us, oh no, no, we didn't mean it. No, he could write anytime. We just won't accept any of his pieces, but we'll pretend we could theoretically accept it. So you stop yelling at us. Okay, sure, sure, whatever. Look, The Guardian does great work. They have done thoughtful critique of Israel in the past. I And, and by the way, the substance of what Robinson wrote is, once you get past the joke, it's totally true. It's a third rail. You, if you say in American politics, let's take money out that would have gone to Israel, you will be in massive political trouble. Anyone who says the opposite doesn't know one thing about American politics. You should be fired from the Guardian because you obviously don't understand American politics at all, and you're an editor. Now, and they say, oh, well, how, why did you distinguish it from other countries? Well, that's because Tajikistan is not guaranteed to get money from <laughs> America. Okay. Whereas Israel de facto is, and if you say no, I don't believe that. No, they could take it out at any moment, and that's not would be normal within American political um, actions. Again, you have no business in news. You should immediately be fired because you don't know the news. And. Look, I want, of course, it's important to be super fair. Um, and so The Guardian does have a record of um, thoughtful and critical pieces on the Israeli government. So I don't know what set uh, the editor in chief off in this case. Um, and I do want to get back to that point in just a second, but I want to also provide evidence for um, you know some of the other headlines and opinion pieces that you can find at The Guardian, including Israel's annexation of the West Bank will be yet another tragedy for Palestinians. Uh, here's another one, Palestinians excluded from Israeli COVID vaccine rollout as jabs go to settlers. 
Israeli forces leave 41 children homeless after raising Palestinian village, UN says. Um, so you guys get the point. It's not like they completely ban this uh, point of view. I don't know what it was that set the editor in chief off uh, with Nathan Robinson. I. You know, every once in a while when stories like this come up, I wonder, is it really because of the issue that they're debating and discussing, or is it because of something else? And they're just, you know, using the the topic or the tweet as the scapegoat, right? Or the reason for for scrapping him or refusing to publish any more of his columns. I don't know. But what I do know is this story is not an exception. It's the rule in media, guys. This is the kind of this is why I'm at TYT. Like I, I get to say what I get to say what I want. I get to cover the kinds of topics I want to cover. Um, sometimes I cover topics that I'm not that interested in, but it's worth doing because I'm not the end all be all of what we should cover on the show. You should listen to other people's opinions and and you know go with they what what they want to cover as well. But my point is, I have yet to experience another workplace in media where I'm not worried about. Oh, are they gonna look at my tweets? Are they gonna think I'm too brash? Am I a little too fiery for them? Because I have gotten that kind of feedback at other places. So anyway, that's my long way of saying that um, the media in America is fundamentally broken when this kind of censorship is is the rule, it's not the exception. Yeah, whenever you just criticize right wingers, they scream into the abyss, cancel culture, I had my feelings hurt. Okay, uh, they canceled my feelings of validation. Um, now, when it happens to someone on the left wing, everybody's like, "Oh, whatever, who cares?" Um, so, oh yeah, you shouldn't be. A, I mean, look, right wingers in America try to pass laws saying you're not allowed to criticize Israel. <laughs> then they claim they're in favor of free speech. Nonsense. The only thing Robinson did wrong was he shouldn't have apologized. There was absolutely yeah. nothing to apologize for, and he shouldn't have taken down the tweets. Uh, so. Look, some of my old jokes, people will say, "Oh, yeah, you should apologize." No, I'm not going to apologize for a joke. If you're too dumb to understand a joke, that's on you. That's not on me. Uh, so um, Robinson didn't do anything wrong, and there's only two possibilities. McCollum was overly sensitive because he's so worried. And by the way, the anti-Semitism is massive. It is real. There's they're attacking synagogues, and yes, the right wing is talking about. How uh, they're back to talking about a Soros and the Rothschilds, and they're, they're, now they're in Congress. People talking about Jewish space lasers and insanity and how they control everything. So I get why you would be overly sensitive, right? But this goes too far. You're you're not allowing a free discourse about actual foreign policy, or you didn't actually want the discourse. The Guardian should figure out which one is which, and then take appropriate action because the Guardian is supposed to be better than this. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.